Right now on 12, tenants in Mott Haven say enough is enough, and they are tired of the up and down status of the elevators in their building. They say they have been a problem for far too long. Also, if you've been wondering when it's going to feel like July, stop it. Daryl will let us know when the scorching weather is heading our way. Meanwhile, the crisis in Cuba continues and now local leaders calling for action to help the people of the island nation. I'm Kurt Semder and this is News 12. We're going to have all those stories for you and much more coming up in just a few moments. But first, a developing story out of the East New York section of Brooklyn, where a pair of robbers pretended to be cops and stole hundreds of dollars from a man last night. And police are searching for the two of them right now. News 12's Katie Vasquez at the scene. And Katie, what happened? How did this all begin? Meanwhile, some breaking news right now out of the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. Police say a man shot and killed. As cops say, a 21-year-old victim was shot in the torso, shoulder, and leg. This on Clarkson Avenue just after 2 o'clock this afternoon. We're told he was taken to Kings County Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Right now, no arrests have been made. Moving to the Bronx now, tenants at a NYCHA complex in Mod Haven, they're fed up. They say their elevators have given them issues for years, constantly breaking down, and now they are threatening to take action. But now the Housing Authority looks to be addressing this situation. News 12's Arnold Davick is at the Mitchell Houses right now with more. Arnold, just how many buildings are we talking about here? Thank you, and with elevators out, that means you might have to go up and down stairs a lot, and that's not something you want to be doing with the heat that we are expecting New. over the next couple of days. Bringing in Daryl Green right now. Daryl, we're on heat alert here on News 12 with good reason. What are we looking at? All right, Daryl. Thank you so much. As the situation in Cuba goes, grows more dire by the day, many Cubans here in the U.S. are calling on the government to act, including those in Congress. I spoke with Brooklyn Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis about what she wants to see done to a regime that, sh as she puts it, destroyed the lives of so many, including her own family. A day that Cubans have long waited for has arrived, and now the American government, along with the international community, have to step up. That's the message from Brooklyn Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. We need to stand as leaders of the free world against communism. Maliotakis, whose mother fled Cuba in 1959 to come to this country, points to the lack of basic human rights and necessities as the reason for the uprising. She adds that the people standing up to the government are doing so at great risk and great disadvantage. The Cuban people don't have anything to defend themselves with. They have nothing to fight back with. And when these you know, brutal regime forces come and they start to crack down, beating them, jailing them, abducting them uh, and, and shooting them, you know, they, they, have, they have no way to protect themselves. And so they're going to be killed. Maliotakis says she has reached out to the White House, as has Florida Senator and fellow Cuban Marco Rubio. She hopes the Cuban caucus, which includes a record 10 members in Congress, can get their point across. This is our opportunity to speak in a united voice, Democrats and Republicans that make up this Cuban uh, caucus uh, that, that can truly push at this time this administration to do something. President Biden did release a statement on Monday calling on the Cuban government to, quote, hear their people and serve their needs. Over the past few days, Cubans here in the U.S., including right over the bridge in New Jersey and in Times Square, have asked for more. And Maliotakis believes all Americans, Cuban or not, should care about what's going on in the island nation. Because we are a free people who want to see freedom and democracy around the world, not communism, not socialism, not tyranny. And we need to, we need to take this opportunity right now to try and liberate this country who has suffered so much under decades of communist rule. And as the people of Cuba continue to protest, other members of our local government are taking notice, including State Assembly Member Natalia Fernandez of the Bronx, whose father came to the U.S. from Cuba. This is now the people speaking up for what they really need, what they really want. And this is also a moment for the first time in, I think, 30 years that the people of Cuba have actually started to protest, rally, and really, like, you know, put their voice forward into the changes that they want to see because it's gotten to a point that is just, you know, uh, insufferable. And the assembly member adds that it is important to keep talking about what is happening in Cuba and to utilize social media to keep their message strong and the conversation going. 
Meanwhile, tonight, our Justice for All Town Hall Show, where we are going to be discussing important topics when it comes to policing. So we asked our viewers, what should be the next focus for police reforms? And as you see here, the majority of which saying defunding should be the next focus for police reforms. 32% increasing patrols right behind it at 30%. Of course, we want you to check out our Justice for All Town Hall tonight at 7 o'clock for more on these topics. Our very own Asia McKenzie and Jessica Cunnington will be hosting this special event tonight at 7 o'clock right here only on News 12. All right, it's the tag team you didn't see coming. One of the biggest pop stars of the summer joining forces with President Biden, all to help get young Americans vaccinated. 18-year-old actress and singer Olivia Rodrigo visiting the White House today to promote COVID-19 vaccines and meet with the president and Dr. Anthony Fauci. The White House says young people are lagging far behind in vaccinations as the contagious Delta variant continues to spread. Rodrigo says talking with loved ones might go a long way in bucking that trend. It's important to have conversations with friends and family members, encouraging all communities to get vaccinated and actually get to a vaccination site, which you can do more easily than ever before. Now, as of this week, 24% of 12 to 15 year olds and 37% of 16 to 17 year olds are fully vaccinated. 42% of 18 to 24 year olds are fully vaccinated as well. Well, we want to help you celebrate our communities making a comeback by sharing your I'm back moment with us here on News 12. And today I want to give a very special shout out to one viewer submission that we received. Check out the picture that you see here. This is for from Renat Bocino from Brooklyn. Now he is shouting out his son who he says has missed so much during the pandemic, including his senior year of high school and of course the baseball season too. But now he's back showing his Met pride at the ballpark. Good for him like it. All right, whether it's a family reunion, enjoying a game, whatever it is, we want you to submit your story just like they did. Submit it over to news12.com slash the comeback. You could be featured on mornings with news 12 plus you could win a one of a kind News 12 branded priority bike. Take a look at this. You can enter now over at news12.com. You want to get in on that. Look at the bike right there. It's good stuff. And if you're itching to hit the road this summer, maybe on a bike trip, I don't know. News 12 has got you covered. Tune in tomorrow as we feature some of the awesome getaways that are just around the corner in your neighborhood. You can catch Road Trip close to home every Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on News 12. All right, it's been stirring up quite a buzz over on social media in just a few minutes. You're going to hear from the Brooklyn based company behind the mac and cheese ice cream. That's right. And in just a few minutes, gun violence on the rise here in New York. You're going to hear about Governor Cuomo's plan to combat the trend. But first, let's take a look and see how the stock market fared here on Wednesday. Right now at 10, as COVID numbers reach levels this city hasn't seen in months, new vaccine mandates from both the mayor and the governor aim to bring them back down. But is it enough? And a cool and comfortable kickoff to your Tuesday, but we are tracking some intense storms for later this week. Daryl breaking down when all of this is expected to hit. Time runs out on a nationwide pause on evictions because of the pandemic. What this means for tenants across the five boroughs moving forward. We are waking up to some cooler temperatures tomorrow morning. But how long does this relief last? Daryl's breaking it down for you in your first forecast. Daryl. Daryl, thank you. Right now, the surge in COVID cases here in the city continues. As of today, the average number of new cases reported daily is at nearly 1,200. Now, exactly a week ago, it was at a little more than 800 at that point. That's a 42% jump in just the past seven days. And new tonight, the Delta variant continues to dominate new COVID infections across the city. Officials and doctors are fighting to find ways to get more New Yorkers vaccinated. While also helping to stop the spread of the virus. News 12's Marissa Marcelino has the latest for us tonight from Bed-Stuy. Marissa. Marissa, thank you. And while masks are still being strongly recommended here in our city tonight, mask mandates are being reinstated across the nation in Louisiana. Mask mandates for everyone ages five and up, both indoors and outdoors. They have to wear a mask starting on Wednesday. Also in California, San Francisco and Bay Area, they have an indoor mask mandate that begins tomorrow. Now for the COVID vaccine, 70% of adults have now received at least one dose. That is the number that President Biden wanted to hit by the 4th of July, but the nation getting there almost a month later. Some positive news, though, according to the White House, the seven day average of newly vaccinated Americans, that is at its highest 
since July 4th. Now, parents, listen up, because if you want your kids fully vaccinated by the new school year, you got to do it now. This is the last week for kids heading back to school on September 13th to get their first shot of the Pfizer vaccine. And that would put them on track to be fully vaccinated in time for the start of classes. And new tonight, the CDC is adding 16 travel destinations to its very high COVID-19 risk level list. The CDC recommends that you avoid traveling to these locations. And some of those destinations that have been added to the list include Ireland, Greece, St. Bart's, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and St. Martin. For the rest of this list and to check out the risk level by destination, head on over to our website, news12.com. And tomorrow afternoon, you can tune in right here on News 12 at 3.45 p.m. as President Biden is set to update the nation on his administration's response to the uptick in COVID cases. The president is set to lay out the progress that's being made to increase the vaccination rate here at home and all across the globe. And as the federal moratorium on evictions expired this past weekend, millions of people across the country who are behind on their rent could soon end up on the streets, including thousands of New Yorkers. News 12 Cecilia Waugh is in Soundview tonight with the latest developments on this. Cecilia. Cecilia, thank you. We want to get to developing news tonight. According to the Wall Street Journal, the New York State Attorney General's inquiry into claims of sexual harassment against Governor Cuomo is reaching completion. The journal saying that people familiar with the case expected to wrap up this month. This comes as the New York Times reports that the governor's testimony in the case lasted 11 hours when prosecutors questioned him back on July 17th. And could it be Governor de Blasio, the mayor not ruling out a run for governor during his briefing today? When asked about his future after he leaves office in January, the mayor did not confirm nor deny a run at higher office, just saying he's not ruling out anything and is focused on getting the city back to full recovery from COVID. Well, a three alarm fire broke out in a scrap yard in Brooklyn just before four o'clock. Fire officials on the scene there this afternoon as it sent billowing smoke into the air, but it is now under control. According to the FDNY, the fire broke out at 100 by 100 foot scrap yard. This is at 5811 Preston Court. The fire department was able to get it under control and we're told luckily no one was injured. And new tonight, shocking new data out right now from the NYPD highlighting the city's surge in gun violence. The NYPD says there was a total of 11 shootings over the weekend with 23 victims. This includes the two teenage boys who were shot while attending a birthday party in Staten Island. That gang related mass shooting in front of a Queens laundromat on Saturday night that left 10 people hurt and the deadly shooting of 32 year old Irvin Monroe in Canarsie just yesterday. And those new numbers show that as of yesterday, there have been 900 shootings in New York City this year. That is up from 777 during the same time last year, a nearly 16% increase. And take a look at these pictures tweeted out by the 46th precinct in the Bronx as officers there seizing 60 dirt bikes, mopeds, quads, and a loaded gun. This happened just over the past weekend. And NYPD precincts all across the city will be gathering with their respective communities tomorrow night as part of the National Night Out. Community members are going to be gathering for food, games, music, and just so much more, all to build relationships with neighbors and police officers. And so many of the precincts have been tweeting out their events on social media. You can see this tweet from the 61st Precinct. They're going to have some music, food, and a lot of community info and uh, moderation as well. Over in the 45th Precinct, it looks like they've got a live band, some arts and crafts, and even a movie, Zoot Topia on tap for the kids that head over there. And on the 44th precinct, they've got face painting, rides, a bouncy house, and so much more. If you want to check out what your officers in your neighborhoods are doing tomorrow for National Night Out, head on over to their Twitter accounts. A lot of them have all the events posted there. A lot of fun events you want to take advantage. Also tomorrow, as possible, budget cuts loom for the MTA, elected leaders, transit advocates, and riders all going to get together to call on the federal government to step up and help out. Brooklynites set to gather in Bay Ridge to rally and ask for Congress to send federal funds to cover the MTA budget deficit. Officials say they're concerned the deficit will lead to service cuts, fare hikes, and job losses, when what the MTA needs is more trains and more local and express buses citywide. And the city will be continuing to spray for West Nile virus tomorrow as the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene set to spray in both the Bronx and Brooklyn between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Now in Brooklyn, the spraying will be happening in Marine Park and Fresh Creek Basin. In the Bronx, it'll be happening throughout Pelham Bay Park. Health officials recommend staying inside, but if you have to go out, 
and do get some pesticide on you, make sure you wash your skin and clothes with soap and water. I feel like life is, is over for me. A once homeless family thought they had found their dream home, but little did they know it was being used in a scheme to steal from the government, and now it is falling apart. And most of the week looking pretty dry. We do have some weather to watch coming our way, though, and Daryl is breaking down possible storms and showers for later on this week in just a few minutes.